Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. We're joined today with a very special guest, returning guest, Ken Lewis, uh, CEO of AppMax, OneGold.com as well. And uh, he's someone who's come on the show and given us a great idea of what is going on in precious metals through the bear market, through times where it didn't feel like a bull market. And so it's a great time to get updated with Ken now here at Crush the Street in August of 2020 with gold pretty close to $2,000 at an all-time high and uh, silver doing what it's doing. So uh, Ken, thanks so much for coming on Crush the Street with me today. Hey, thanks for having me, buddy. So I, I'd like to get your thoughts on where we are right now, uh, where we've been and what we've seen this year in 2020 as it pertains to gold. <laughs> Well, it's been a roller coaster. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm looking at some numbers here. Gold's up 27% this year. Uh, silver's up 49% this year. Um, you know, obviously, the S&P's recovered a little bit here in the last week, uh, up about 5%. So gold's kind of done its job when you think about it being a safe haven investment, performing ideally well when the equities markets are not doing as well. You think about the pandemic and, and kind of what's happened to our society. You think about the printing of money to be able to prop up our economy. So you know, gold's really done exactly what it should have done this year uh, and behaved in ways that I think most economists would say, you know, we expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. I was talking to a buddy um, over the weekend and I'm like, man, gold's doing good this year. And his perspective on gold was, well, that, that's not good. That's like telling me the VIX is up this, you know, right now. Like, I don't want to, you yeah. know, I don't want to, uh, have you saying that in such a positive way, but obviously being positioned in it and, you know, analyzing the economy the way it is and expecting certain things, it feels right. good to be on the right side of the trade. Right. Right. Well, look, I mean, not only, not only you get on the right side of the trade, I always, you and I've talked about this before. It's a diversification strategy, right? It's, it's, you know, having money in metals, if it's doing great, that means maybe some of the other investments aren't doing as well. If it's not doing so well, then probably you're killing it somewhere else. So it's really a portfolio strategy that I have always viewed precious metals. And even today, my family calls me up and says, should I own metal? I go, it depends. Um, it depends on your circumstance. It depends on how, you're, how diversified you are. There's just a lot of questions you have to ask to figure out whether it's the right call for a certain person at a certain time. Yeah. So what are we seeing this year in terms of volume uh, percentages? I mean, are you seeing spikes in volume or more? Is there more interest in gold and silver now with gold near $2,000 and silver, you know, in the mid twenties than there was, you know, six months ago, a year ago? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, this has been a great year for anyone in the precious metal space. Uh, demand it's as high as we've ever seen it. Uh, and when I say as high as we've ever seen it, probably order of magnitude 50% higher than our all-time high. So, and that's for physical demand, okay? That's physical product shipped to the home, dramatically higher demand uh, for gold and silver. Um, silver has had its run, as we all know, it really took off uh, about 60 days ago in terms of how it's performed. It was a little late to the game, but we all knew it was gonna happen just because it tends to move with gold. And silver demand just, just skyrocketed about 60 days ago as well. Um, when we look at our business, uh, the month of March and April were all, March was an all time high month for us. Um, but I'm going to tell you, August is probably going to be the top three for our company in our history. Um, so demand continues to be strong. Uh, even, you know, the last couple of weeks has slowed down a little bit as equities have taken off and, you know, people are becoming a little more comfortable with risk right now and jumping back into the markets, which look, I understand with S and P hitting new records and things like that. Uh, so it's kind of tempered a little bit of the demand for metals. But even then, demand today in metals is still higher than it was running uh, pre-pandemic. And so what does the ratio uh, roughly look like right about now with silver doing what it's doing, gold doing what it's doing? Are more people interested in silver uh, when they reach out to you? You know, it's funny. I mean, we're, we tater probably to the more higher net worth uh, investor than some other physical bullion dealers. So my business tends to run about 70, 30, meaning 70% of my revenue is gold, 30% is silver in that general ballpark. Uh, and what you see is when silver makes a run, I might go down to 60, 40, um, but I generally don't go much lower than that. Uh, and so have we seen our ratio of silver be higher? Uh, yes, we have. 
until about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, silver was really uh, performing very, very well compared to what it was doing for the year. Uh, but again, in the last week, two weeks, we've seen silver kind of lit up a little bit again, and gold's taken off again in terms of a ratio of our demand. So with the, the gold-silver ratio uh, where it's at, does it, does it make sense to you that you know, silver makes up only 30% of, or as Hard much man. as 30% of your, your revenues? I mean, does that, is that any sort of metric that should give investors some sort of insight as to you know, where silver could ultimately go? You know, it's, it's a great question. I mean, my demand and what I sell, what my clients procure is probably not reflective of the, of the more general gold-silver ratio out there. Uh, it's more a nature of the type of clients that I do business with. Um, but I, I do believe, and you have seen it historically, right, when when that thing gets out of out of touch, right, historically, I think the gold-silver ratio is running in the 70-ish range, somewhere right in that, right, that, that, that ballpark, I would say. I think we were getting as high as 100 uh, to 1, uh, not long ago. And then silver went on a run. I mean, you know, I'm looking at it just in the last 90 days, silver's up 55.7%, right? And so it went on a run and all it was doing was narrowing that gold silver ratio back to the mean. So, you know, I do think if you go look at history and you look at how the gold silver ratio has performed, traditionally gold's the first to move and silver is second to move. And traditionally, you then revert back to the mean on the gold-silver ratio. So, you know, silver was a great investment, obviously, 90 days ago, if you were looking for a short uh, buck, a short win there. I will tell you, about what, two weeks ago on a Monday, we also saw gold and silver have a massive pullback day where silver lost about 15% of its, of its increase uh, or of its value, I should say, in one day. And I've never seen that kind of drop in silver in, in the time I've been in the industry. And that kind of concerned me because we think of precious metals as a safe haven investment. And we saw a little bit of volatility on that given day. I have a theory on that. My theory is that you have less educated buyers in the market today than you ever had in the past. And I think that was an overreaction. I really strongly do feel like that was an overreaction. The problem is when people think about metals as a safe haven investment and you see that kind of volatility in metals, you start to think, geez, how is it any different than equities? Um, so that one day, I do think it's been a challenge for us uh, in precious metal cells, I should, I should say. But I think it's going to revert right back to where the basics start to kick into gear and people start to look at you know, where our economy stands today, how much money we've had to print, where are we are on global trade, where we're on different issues out there. And I think you're going to still see that precious metals have a great uh, position, at least for the next six to 12 months. Yeah, that's an interesting point you bring up there and something that I think we all need to acknowledge, which, but also reflect on, you know, if precious metals are that responsive to just a, a flippant retail investor, uh, do you think that'll be the, the case longer term or will there be greater economic forces that price the metals where they ultimately should be despite, you know, right the the emotions of us as investors i, I you, you nailed it i do believe it's the second of what you mentioned there uh, i do believe we have look you read about all the different online trading houses and the amount of new customers are adding this year amex is no different amex has actually added we're going to probably add 150,000 new customers this year okay we normally add about 80,000 a year so 150,000 new customers, an incremental 70,000 plus over what we normally do. We know there's a lot in that are not as educated and they're, they're maybe more reactive and not necessarily more strategic in their decision making and some of the investments they're making. So I do believe the numbers will eventually play out and that people will become more knowledgeable over time and you won't see uh, the kind of volatility you're seeing right now in, in, in at least in, in precious metals at least. Ken, I don't like to corner my guests into price predictions and targets, uh, but I, I'd like to ask you as to you know, where you believe we are in this bull market. Are you optimistic that things are still in the you know, early to middle stages? And uh, you know, what's your thoughts on that? You know, look, I mean, I have to be careful about giving advice, but what I, what I do like to do is share what others are saying. And you know, analysts tend to still be positive on precious metals. Um, look, I, I, I wrote down one thing I wanted to talk about today, and that was real interest rates. You know, I was reading recently how the Fed may change their whole position on how they view inflation. 
and allowing inflation to be at levels much higher than they traditionally have done. I don't know if you've read about that recently. So it should come out this week, I was told. So right now they say their target's 2% inflation. Well, the reality is I think now they're looking at maybe letting that number go higher. And traditionally when, when it gets to 2% inflation, you start seeing changes in the way the Fed behaves. Um, if we allow even 2% inflation, and then we look at what um, interest is running as a whole, you're, you're negative now. You're negative on your dollars, right? You're, you're, the inflation's eating up any increases you're making potentially in, uh, in making on your, on, your, on your investments, I should say. And so if real interest rates are negative, that tends to be a very, very, very good uh, picture for precious metals. History has shown that. Go back and look at how precious metals have performed in negative real interest markets. They tend to do very, very well. Uh, and again, I, I like that's one of those things that really supports precious metals in the long term. Now, when we start to see inflation moderate lower and we see interest rates start to go up, that tends to be generally a negative for um, precious metal pricing and demand. So, so my gut tells me just on that alone, real interest rates, uh, we're not going to see any changes in, in interest rates, in regular interest rates any anytime soon. We've printed trillions of dollars in debt. I just don't see how it can't be good long-term for precious metals. My only comeback on that is if the equities continue to defy logic, if the equities continue to set all-time highs, well, then maybe we're going to find metals won't do quite as well because people's money is going into, uh, into the equities markets. But the equities seem so overvalued, depending on what you're looking at in the equity space. They, they do seem very overvalued right now, especially when you look at the bottom lines of some of the companies right now. And some of those companies are really struggling, but their but their their stock price doesn't seem to reflect that. Uh, so again, I, I tend to think it's very positive for precious metals. And I don't think it's going to be for three or six months. I think it could be positive for precious metals for two to three years, uh, to be honest with you. I think we've kind of hit our hit our curve and, and now we're in more into a bull market for precious metals for several years to come. It's interesting how you point out the the Fed looking to target a higher inflation rate. And it had me thinking, because even this morning, I was just looking at the history of, you know, what we've seen governments do, you know, remove uh, gold from the dollar, you know, in 1933 with Roosevelt, a revaluation so banks can pay back their depositors. And then, you know, you had 1970, um, what, 71 with Nixon and the complete removal of the gold standard, you know, Mario Draghi in 2012 with, you know, the things that he did and, you know, the state of the, the, the sovereign debt crisis in Europe and just, you know, example after example of right. central banks and governments going to the next level to contain the crisis. And I think it's so easy to think that, you know, we've gotten to the end of what the governments and the Fed can do can do because of these conventional constraints. But really, uh, there's probably even more that we haven't even thought of yet. And so, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? The, the degree that easing and monetary policies can continue to expand to contain the current financial situation? Look, I'm, I'm not as well versed as you are, I'm sure on this, but when I heard the Fed was going out and basically buying up equities, um, you know, and, and propping up the, the price of our stock markets uh, to a degree, you got you got you got a question, kind of, you got a question, what's going on there? Um, uh, look, I, I know there's many more lever, levers that the Fed can pull. Uh, you have to believe, though, that we've run out of a lot of those options at this stage. Um, when you're out buying bonds and equities and other things to prop things up. Um, it, it's getting tough. And uh, I, I'm nervous about allowing inflation rates to, to grow any further. I, uh, I am amazed, though. I mean, look, I saw housing starts were up 14%, I believe it was, I read this morning. Um, you know, just, just blossoming. Retail's doing very well in many, many scenarios. So in, in some ways, you see our economy really starting to come back strong. But how much of that is artificial? How much is that because the government's propping it up? It's a question I can't answer, to be honest with you. Uh, I do find the timing rather convenient with the upcoming election. Um, I believe personally that um, Trump needs a strong economy to get reelected. And uh, I think there are going to be any stops that can be pulled out in the next few months to make that a reality. Right. Well, I, I think there's going to be a lot of back and forth on, uh, on both sides to really uh, create a fireworks show here 
which is going <laughs> to provide for a lot of entertainment, I think, as we go forward the next couple months. <laughs> so, which generally, hey, which generally is good for precious metals, right? Um, that's the thing we talk about here in our, in our company. Is I don't really have a strong opinion on the election. I don't like to get into politics all that much. All I know is the uncertainty and and the amount of drama that's going to come from that process is generally going to be good for safe haven investments. Um, I just have to believe that. Um, and, you know, history has shown, by the way, that uh, if a Democrat gets in office, um, you see uh, an exodus out of the equities markets and into safe haven investments. Um, we, we, we have seen that in our, in our company's history. Um, so we know that's good for business. If Trump stays in office, he's still got to find a way to pay down all the debt that he's, he's printed. So, again, I think we're in for a great run for precious metals. I have no idea what the prices of metals are going to be. But I think we're in for a great run. And I, I'd also tell you real quick, I know we talked about our one goal platform, our digital platform. That prop platform is going to do $200 million in revenue this year. So it's only two years old. Um, and I think consumers are getting into metals that never thought about metals, you know, two years ago. They thought it was too complicated and it wasn't for them, if you will. And the fact that that platform with this app environment, making it really simple, allowing consumers to do 200 million revenues tells me more people are thinking about metals today than they ever did uh, in our history, probably. And that's getting younger people in, which I think is great long term. And I'm hopeful that metals as a whole can be a home in people's portfolio. And one of the things I like to acknowledge uh, to uh, uh, my listeners is that we will eventually get to a peak in precious metals, right. you know, the end of the bull market, a blow off top. And I want to talk about, you know, selling metals and, you know, the process of that. How easy is it? Is it inconvenient? Once you have the product, are you stuck with it? Because a lot of people have only bought and they've never had the experience of actually selling and dealing yeah. with the metal. And obviously it's probably nerve wracking to stick your metal in a box and you know, hand it to some postman. So, uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about the process of selling precious metals back to a dealer and, you know, how, how easy do you make that for, for people? You know, look, we, we spend a lot of time, look, we like to think we're the best at serving a customer. And, and so we look for the pain points that customers face and we try to find a way to, to, to plug that hole, if you will. Um, about 18 months ago, we rolled out a new program at Atmax and some of our competition have copied it, but then they kind of pulled back from it. And, and what we did is when you call in, first and foremost, you're going to get a quote, you're going to get it quick. Um, you're going to get a timely response. You're going to get someone to answer the phone when you call. But then also we're going to offer you are a few things that we think help give you peace of mind. First is we're going to give you a ship label. Um, and then we're also going to cover the insurance uh, on the shipment. And, and that's very, very important. Think about it now. You're putting $20,000 in metals in a box. It's got to be so nerve wracking for, for individuals. Uh, we give you a video on how to package it. We give you a ship label. We give you insurance. And then more importantly, it's next day or two day performance on the carrier. And you get paid within a day of us receiving the product. So from the time you make a phone call to dollars in your hand should be two to three days max. And we think that's super, super important because the longer that duration goes, the more nervous your customer gets, right? They, they have metal they just shipped out. They're wondering if they're going to get paid for it. They're wondering if someone's going to say the metal's different than what they thought it was. Um, they're wondering if they're going to be taken advantage of in general. Um, our business on the buyback side is funny. We're setting all-time records on the buying side, but we're also setting all-time records on people selling to us right now. Um, so, which is just amazing, uh, because there are some profit taking being done out there, right? There's people that got into metal at eleven and twelve hundred dollar gold, and now they're at nineteen hundred. There's some really nice profits for them. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's very, very important. And and there are some other retailers that offer similar services to us. I don't think they're any as large as we are, and I don't know if there's many out there that uh, can pay you guaranteed within a day of receipt. Uh, I think that's very, very few and far between. Um, but probably the most important thing is a lot of people don't know what they own and they need to be educated on what is it, what is it this worth and why is it worth that? We take the time to try to educate you through the process. Um, and honestly, we'll, there'll be times where we'll tell you, you may, you may want to find someone else to buy that from you because that kind of product is really 
not really up my alley, and that's rare. Uh, it's very rare, by the way, that happens. But we want to educate you because there may sometimes be other op- there are better options for you out there than what we can offer you uh, on our process. So, and what what would that be? Is that a, a product that maybe somebody else is is unique to a, another company? You know, has a stamp of another bullion dealer. Would you not sell something as a, you know, the stamp of another bullion dealer, for instance? You know, what, what, what would that be? I'll I'll actually even take anyone's metal, by the way. I'll just sell to secondary. Doesn't doesn't bother me at all. Uh, No, it's typically a graded product. Product that has a very high premium to its metal value. It's very unique. Um, I've grown my assortment. I'm up to almost thirty thousand products on my side. I'm trying to sell more graded and numismatic kind of collectible products. But there are some products that are just not for me. Uh, you got an ancient coin that's got really no precious metal content to it that's worth $25,000. I'm going to look it up and go, that coin's worth $25,000, and you're going to expect me to pay you $23,24 for it because you want to get uh, maximum value. And I'm going to be like, that's really not my kind of product to play in. I don't want to type my capital in a product I can't sell easily on my site. Uh, I would tell you probably to look at an auction site or an eBay or someone like that, that can probably be a better home for a product like that. Now, again, we're trying to buy more of that product, but there's just some exceptions out there that we just can't, we can't really handle. And, and our site's not really designed to handle that kind of product. Sure. Ken, uh, if you would, you know, and I think we kind of did this a little bit just now, you know, tell us a little bit more about AppMax, maybe what separates you guys. And of course, onegold.com and you know how uh investors and people can interact with you and and um you know app max specifically look both companies 4.9 out of 5 on our ratings um we pride ourselves on service that's the number one thing i want any listener to walk away with is uh, you got a problem you call us you're gonna get taken care of period hands down highest integrity in the industry by far Uh, we're celebrating our 20 year anniversary this year uh very proud of that uh you don't get to be in, in business for 20 years and do the volume of size that we do about being good at what you do. Uh, we've done over $12 billion of flow on our, on our AppMix platform. Now um, we have over 1.9 million customers. So, so my main thing is you can trust us. We're going to take care of you. Uh, we have a great user experience on our website. Uh, we've actually just rolled out a new app as well for AppMix. And on the one goal side, we're just trying to be disruptive in a space that, Frankly, we're trying to find new ways to get people into precious metals. And it's got that 24-7 immediate kind of instantaneous, I can get in, I can get out in a matter of moments notice. And I can convert to physical with a couple of clicks and have it shipped to my home. And, and I think that business is proving to be on point. Uh, I'll tell you, we look at app review scores. We've actually had 80,000 downloads of our app in, in nine months. Um, we just launched in January, 80,000 downloads. And we watch our review scores and what do people think? And you compare it to anything in the market. I won't name brands. I don't think that's appropriate to me to do that. But you look at any comparable product in the market, it's just not getting the positive feedback that we're getting on One Gold. So again, give us a run. Try it out either way. At Max or One Gold, we're here to support your needs. And more importantly, we're here to take care of you through the process. Well, Ken, you're first class and, and it reflects on the companies that you run. So I appreciate you and appreciate you taking the time to come on the show with me today. And once again, educate us on what is going on in precious metals and in the market. So thank you so much, sir. All right, man. Take care, buddy.